again and welcome to Manch Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons. And I'm Carla Garrick. And I'm kind of Tammy Simmons. I'm actually Tammy Garthwaite now, but Tammy Simmons in the wor in that world. That is true. So yes. you're going to keep your Simmons for um, your professional yeah, political my stuff? My political name. Yeah. I, I, my legal name will be Garthwaite, but... Garth Wade is hard to fit yeah. on a board. And I, <laughs> and I already have signs, so. Right. And, uh, yeah, and back here, you wouldn't even be able to fit Carla. <laughs> <laughs> but so. we, uh, as you guys can see, Tammy is very tan. We just got back from Florida. Yep. Marvelous wedding. Yep. It was very Little sweet. windy. Little windy. It was windy, but, but we it were was on still the beach. Nice. We were on the beach. It was beautiful, yeah. and the sun was shining. I mean, it could it have was, been, it could been colder. It yes. could have been much colder. Um. We were down in Florida for two weeks, and the wind this year is just crazy. That's what Jan just keeps saying. The wind's just crazy. Oh, it's not usually like that. No. Okay. No, we've been down around the same time, multiple times in the same location. And he's like, why was it so much different this year? And then he's like, at the end of the vacation, you know, when we were coming home, he goes, it literally was the wind. Because like you said, yes, we had that one day that we were all in the ocean. Right. And then it was cold and windy. It was. And sort and of then, foggy. It, even, that one morning was like super misty. I couldn't <laughs> even, even see if, out the window. Even the day of the wedding, had it not been windy, we would have all been in the water. Yes, we would. Because the air And then temperature. coming back to the camp with the fire. Yeah, we it had was a lovely. beach fire and you know, the stuff. Well, it was great anyway. So that that's well, what we did for the last bit. Us and all the viewers, congratulations Yay. to Tammy. Yay. Yay. Um, so, so that's the happy news. <laughs> so, so needless to say, we are super prepared. Yes. But I do have some um, stuff I want to talk well, about. Well, I wanted to. I was stuff too. obviously what keeps bubbling up. Um, first of all, I just have to laugh. We were running a little behind because I tried to use the passport app. Because we were using the passport, we had to Do you use mean the, the parking thing? Yes. Okay. Because in Florida, in some parking lots, you had to, mm -hmm. which was like, uh-oh, down low. You're like, what? Do we even have signal? And and it wasn't super convenient because you're standing there putting in your credit card. <laughs> like, it doesn't take Google Pay. It doesn't I take Apple Pay, which is kind of strange for an app. And also, can I just ask, when did the world decide that everyone can read like four point font? Yes. Now I understand I'm becoming an old lady yeah, and I need my reading to do glasses. Out but, in the sun but I'm just like, you'll stand around and you're just like, like I can't when even you expect me to like <laughs> even see what you're exactly. asking me to do. So I thought, well, I knew there was a passport app downtown and I was like, oh, I have to grab my credit card because I have to pay for parking, blah, blah, blah. So I tried it and I knew because of our experience in Florida that, okay, it's not gonna let me put my credit card in ahead of time, which is stupid, but whatever. Um, so I just did it and I paid for a dollar parking. And you know what, can I just say this? Stop with the convenience fees because there was nothing convenient about it actually. I will go back to probably using my regular card and standing outside and dealing with those stupid machines you know because I, have I paid 32, per 32 cents on a dollar parking. That's, oh, that's ridiculous. That's insane. That's like, usury, it, it, usury actually. You should. Usury? Right. Usury? It, but it, Something but like that. It, if the city wants usury. people to be more honest about paying for parking, don't tag all the fees on. I get that it costs. Sorry. Aha, the Carla words are coming out. <coughs> um, so I actually have one of those, I think it's a generation ago. So it seems like it was in the in the world of the original easy yeah. passes. I don't even know what it's called. It doesn't work <coughs> in all New Hampshire towns, no. but it works in Manchester. It doesn't work in Concord. Great. So, so, so much at least once right. a month, I get a $10 ticket from Concord yeah. because you go up to testify or to do your civic duties or whatever. No, they just make it... 98% impossible for anyone to have a convenient experience. They also started, you know, giving you uh, tickets on Saturdays, which was a which new wasn't thing a and thing, and so then all people of that, right. But the one I have, you could put in different towns, and then it actually counts down. So you only pay for the time you put in. That's nice. Um, so let's say I thought I was going to, it's a two-hour zone, yep. but I only spend an hour. Maybe we don't go for coffee right, right. or something. I just switch it off, and I don't pay for oh, that that's second cool. hour. Yeah, it's so just it's parking, a little clunky. But parking, I get parking where there's like, where there's a destination. And I no longer feel like downtown Manchester is a destination. Um, it is a place where I go once a week, you know, like Dan and I did eat at Thirsty Moose um, on Saturday because we went to the Made in New Hampshire Expo. But um, it's not a nice place. On After Saturday? Being when oh, on Sunday. Get, oh, I'm well, sorry. I was like, when did you like, get back? I was like, I got back before you, and I was at home only at like seven um, or eight. <laughs> so we went out. We had tickets to the new, made a New Hampshire Expo. So How we was did. It? Oh, it's nice. I mean, yeah. 
Dan was thinking we were going to a home show, so he was pleasantly surprised that it wasn't all roofers and you okay. know window people. Um, yeah, I've nice. gone over we the years. We bought some wooden spoons. Yeah, there's there. I highly recommend for people who are proud of New Hampshire, yep. who think this is a great place. Why wouldn't you think so? Yeah, they had all, make sure they did have a whole little section that you could buy tickets to get into. Like, you could get. I think there were free tickets, but you had to show your ID because in the back corner they had all like the breweries, right? So and wineries. So you they gave you you know eight tickets so you could get samples. Right. That was kind of neat. <laughs> I actually I remember it. the last time I went. I think we were fasting. It might have been our first long fast. Mm -hmm. And it was day four, and we did end up at a, t a booth where the guy was selling uh, really delicious hot sauces. I was going to say, it had to be hot sauce. And and we were, like, sampling the hot sauces, and then Louie and I both got, Donned. like, like a super rush and a super, like, not only from the food, but also, like, if you haven't eaten them for four days, maybe you don't want to lean into <laughs> some hot sauce. It was, uh, it was hot stuff. Um... The other thing I brought, besides being annoyed with parking, is, um, so, inflation. <gasps> okay, you all need to hold, pull your pants up and hold on tight, <laughs> because um, you inflation right now is at 8.5%, the highest it's been since 1981. And Shadow 1, Stats will say, if the government's telling you it's 85 we know yep. for a fact it's at least 21% because that's what the congressional well, raise and, was, and it's probably higher than and that. And what's disturbing, so couple things one um i was saying this trying to say to dan what i thought we could talk about um when you travel someplace and there is a sales tax you do really appreciate how much we don't have in pay in taxes um florida has a nine percent sales tax where we were anyways and um so you don't like every time you buy a shirt it's a 20 dollars shirt but then they have to add two dollars so like one store we had i kept getting 10 10 percent off i could get 10 percent off which was basically just covering the tax. So I was curious. I didn't have time to think about it, but I wanted to see like, so how much in just not, not rooms and meals tax, not tax on the restaurants we went to, but how much tax did I spend in the last two weeks just on like incidentals, yeah. just on things. Um, and I bet it adds up pretty quickly. So when people complain and moan that New Hampshire's property taxes are too high, which we could debate that the pr property taxes are too high for different reasons. Be happy to work with anyone yes. who thinks the property taxes uh, are too high but, to make them lower. Right. There's ways to make them lower, but it's not by implementing a sales or an income tax. No, you don't Hampshire. replace one tax with no. another tax. In fact, Connecticut did that in the late 80s. They said to people, hey guys, our property taxes are too high. You know what we should do is we should reduce your property taxes, introduce it, state income tax and a sales tax. It'll only be 2%. Yeah. Believe us. You know where Connecticut ended up? With a higher yeah. than it started with property tax and over, I think it was close to 10% personal income tax. All the towns introduced yeah. uh, city and town taxes. Yeah. So they ended up with a tax burden that was like, I think, like a hundred times higher yeah. than the original one they were trying to fix. Don't trust well, them. Well, and you know, when we talk about local property, we talk about property taxes in New Hampshire, the majority of the spending that generates your property tax bill is done and decided locally. The state, in, the state education pro tax is very small. It really is compared to overall budgets. Um, county taxes are very small and they run pretty lean. Um, but the bulk of your taxes, and especially here in Manchester, are for local spending. You have the school budget, which is just which is more than fifty percent of the city budget. It is, and it, more it, than fifty percent of the city budget. And they're already, um, you know, the mayor Joyce Craig tries to make it sound like, um, well, I've proposed a tax budget uh, that's within the tax cap. Well, that's because by law she's required to, but she also didn't include any severance in her budget, which means you know that your budget is unworkable and you expect them to spend more than what you're proposing. So that's disingenuous. But the school budget's baffling to me because there are so many fewer children enrolled in our schools yet they want millions of dollars more millions more millions and and and, and please Go look at the salaries of the people who are not educating your children, yep. but actually just doing 
admin. Yep. Those people are exploiting you and I and every single taxpayer in New Hampshire for red tape nonsense. Yep. You know, we can do without it. We can make it cheaper. And if we open up school choice, yep. then eventually we will have high performing public we, schools. Of course that everyone will want to support Sorry. because we'll have competition that genuinely forces them to perform. Right. So you can't, you know what I read this morning? What? 130 million adult Americans, 130 million adult Americans cannot read at a sixth grade level. That is an entire generation. When did like forced education start? Like in the early 1900s. So they've had more than a hundred years. This is a failed experiment. I do think it got worse in like the 70s and 80s. I really do think when we started, it, when it became less about, okay, everybody send their kids to school and learn so that they can learn to read and write and such, right? But in the 70s, even in my grade school, I remember they started a busing thing where they were busing kids from one part of my little rural upstate New York town to other parts of the town. And I, I remember even as a kid thinking, I don't really understand. Why aren't they just going to the school where they used to go? And it was in it. They only did it for like one year because apparently it no was one bad. Wanted it. And yeah. you know, we started doing things like that, and we started p putting uh, more emphasis on government indoctrination of the children and controlling the the lives of the children and interfering in the family more and less on teaching the kids to read and write and function as adults. And again, and we say it on the show all the time, if you can't read at a level where you can comprehend, mm -hmm. therefore form ideas, therefore think critically because you can go from this notion to this notion to this notion, which you can only do if you read, then you become susceptible Yep. to a power figure or authoritarian being like, let me tell you what you should think, which in case you missed the last two years was <laughs> everyone going, trust the experts. Uh -oh. Well, you know what? The experts were wrong. Right. And so I was like, okay, it's not just no child left behind. Nope. It is now Everybody. 130 million adults left so, behind. So, you know, on the inflation thing, so uh, on the top, on the tax thing, so Already this year, um, consumer price index is almost, it's like 3.9. It's coming out nine. today. The, yeah. Well, I'm just saying the one that are for our existing budget. It was already, you know, when we put the tax cap in place, and you're welcome for that because... I welcome. was going to say thank you, Tammy. I'll just you say it. it you're welcome. <laughs> um, we were usually at about, you know, 1.9, 2.1 was the cap. So it was a good, it was a good, you know, that's a good cap. Now this year, I think it's more like 3.9. So we're pushing, we're, we're much higher. And th what the the left will always tell you is, oh, you're just complaining. It's only fifty dollars <laughs> a year. They just went up, right? They always have some spin on it, and they always say it's only fifty dollars. You're making a mountain out of a molehill. Now, what they're failing to tell you is this all compounds. So last last year it might have been fifty dollars, and this year it only went up. You know $50. what compounding is? You know how your student debts? You're like, <laughs> ah, what happened there? Because I forgot to ask questions when I signed a contract. This is so, the lesson. It, you know, maybe it was only $50 one year. And you think, oh, that's only ten, like, ten, you know, what's that? $5 a month. You know, like it isn't But on painful. average, they're saying now it's $433 yeah. on average well, if you for just an take, American. If you take your, your you local have to property spend taxes. More. If, you're spend, if you're paying $6,000 a year in property taxes, which is no longer a lot. I mean, when I bought my house, it was like nineteen hundred and eighty dollars property taxes, and I think when I sold my house, it was closer to four grand. So they had already doubled in you know in a couple of years. So it, just to say, if you pay six thousand dollars in property taxes on your home here in Manchester annually, annually, that's your tax bill. You know, instead of it being a sixty dollar charge because it's one or two percent, maybe a hundred and twenty, so that's only ten dollars a month. So you know, they'll tell you it's it's okay, it's only ten dollars. At the rate we're going, you're probably looking at a 10 to 20 percent increase in your taxes next year. So let's just go with the moderate 10 percent. Because if they couldn't, if interest stop, if if inflation stopped now and it was at 8.5 percent, if the consumer price index stopped now, it it would be 8.5. So you know they're going to spend 10 percent. I will give you 30 trillion reasons why it's not going to oh, stop. It's not. But let's just. 
for the sake of argument, say it stops miraculously and all everything doesn't continue to Oh, inflate. can't they just write an order? Isn't that right. how it works? Like, we could just write words on paper and then it can, it'll just Ten do what it says? 10% of $6,000 is $600 a year. That's $50 every single month increased property taxes. You tell me what you're going to get from the city of Manchester or the city school district that is has a value of $50 more every single month. Because I don't know about you, but... Oh, they're going to drop off a free, uh, you know, garbage container to each of us, right? Like they're going to, this is this is a relationship where they're like, they take more money and you get more services. I already no, have a trash that's, container. Yeah, but my point is that they're not doing no. any of those things. And, they I mean, take more, but they give you they, less. They got rid they of... They give you 130 million people who can't read. Right. So our schools, I mean, I saw an article while I was in Florida and I didn't read it because I wasn't going to spoil my, you know, vacation, but it was like... Test scores have improved. You know, we're showing this increase because now the the literacy rate went from, you know, 19% to, you know, 28%. And I was like, but that's still only a third of the kids are literate. It, this is unacceptable. This should never be something that is acceptable to anybody that we can spend millions and millions and millions and millions, millions and millions of dollars on <laughs> education every year. Increase it by millions of dollars every year while the student enrollment decreases. We're back to and that we're chart, back guys. And, and, <laughs> and still only have like a third of the kids able to read or do math at the grade level that they're in. How is this acceptable? Why aren't more people outraged? So two things. The other thing that's happening with inflation, sadly, is uh, the size of the unit of produce mm. is going down yes. by way of example yes. tp which you know apparently was you know it's, however many sheets are those i, I, are I hope people are still hoarding their tp because if we're in hyperinflation you maybe become the most popular person post covid yeah. right so um they make them i saw a thing today that said i think it was Charmin, but whoever some toilet matter, paper right? maker um Size-wise, it has two less rolls in it. It's the same number of rolls. They just made they just the made amount of a little paper smaller. on the roll smaller. So they kept the price the same, reduced it by two yep. toilet rolls because they're trying to not show the consumer that we're in this situation. Yep. What will happen next is that you'll be two rolls short and the price is going to go yep. up. That's the next and I can Now you're getting less than you were before for more. So you have to look at that delta as well when you start to factor these things in. Well, and some of the prices, I don't, I don't, I don't know if you've been to the market since you, we got back. I went to a uh, market basket yesterday. We couldn't which, get cream. Well, the cream thing is bizarre. And there were like sh empty shelves in Florida too. Like, I don't know why half and half is a thing. Like, why is it confusing? Why, where, why is there a half and half shortage? But yesterday I'm in Market Basket. I had to do a double take and I'm like, that's crazy. And this is in Market Basket. A dozen large white eggs, $3.49. Yeah. Who's paying $3.49? If I'm going to spend $3.49 and I glanced up at the cage free packages, they were about the same price. And I'm like, is it is it and because that just of the Ukraine? Do or we the get, whatever has gone get, up yet? Do we get our eggs from the Ukraine? I'm confused. Oh, because, because why are eggs so expensive? So your lesson for today in Big Brother, Big Lie propaganda. Yep. The past two days, everyone has been talking about Putin's inflation. So let me just dissuade you from this notion that somehow the war in the Ukraine is making your stuff more expensive in America. There may be a tangential thing. There might thing, be some. But here's the thing. You can actually go yes. look at the charts it, and they start long before they, the war in the Ukraine. They start actually right at the beginning of the Biden administration is when it starts peaking right. up. I, I mean, I know partisan people no, I mean, like to be look, like, it's it like that. I'm like, Trump authorized six yeah, trillion dollars. He spent money He's equally too. the left, the right, Republicans, Democrats. It's all your fault. All of you, you guys like to go, oh, it's this guy, it's this guy. It's not. It's all of you, and we're the ones that suffer. How do we fix this problem? Here's one way. We need to get the federal government out of our lives. Mm. There is a bill today that is being heard. I think it's being heard this week. I'm not sure, 100% sure if it's today. But it is House Bill 1411. Mm -hmm. It uh, came out of the House. It's now in front of the Senate. I'm hopeful that it will proceed. This is a bill simply 
to try and understand what kind of federal action is being taken in the state of New Hampshire. New Hampshire is a sovereign state, yep. and so it's like, yeah, tell us what you're up to. So this bill is asking for the total number of agency facilities, federal facilities in the state of New Hampshire, the total number of staff, so not particulars, just a just number for the how staff many federal and whether employees. they went up or down. The total number of temporary staff hired per month going up or down. Total federal investigations that are ongoing. The total completed surveillance on New Hampshire residents year to year um, and updated per month. Federal no-knock raids and warrants served in our state. No-knock raids are an insidious, terrible thing that should never have been authorized. It's unconstitutional and, frankly, immoral. Um, and then the number of federal foreign refugee relocations taking place yep. in the state, because, of course, we do know that we do take in refugees, and we have over the years. I'm an immigrant. Right. I, I love immigrants. Say, I'm just, down with it, but let's deal with well, the data, and, and, right? And, and just because you want to know how many doesn't mean that you're anti-immigrant, because people will always say that. Like, oh, you just hate, oh, you right. hate all the immigrants and you hate the refugees. I'm like, no, I think that's wonderful. I just would like to know and the, how, what, how that number is going. And then last in the bill, it does ask the New Hampshire Attorney General to create uh, a searchable database that would then compile this. So this would be requiring the federal government to give us a monthly report telling us about these things that would then be something that we could track sort of as New Hampshire citizens on a dashboard to see what kind of um, things are happening. Speaking of the New Hampshire Attorney General, who I tweeted at this morning, I hope John will get back to me with an answer. Uh, those of you who were following the news while we were gone, uh, sadly, I came back to learn there was mm. another shooting by an officer. This one has been ruled a homicide. homicide. I believe there were three officers. This was in Derry. It was like at two o'clock in the afternoon. Yep. It was over the weekend, I believe. Yep. And uh, a guy with a shotgun was shooting at a neighbor is the story. Three cops showed up. Someone popped him in the chest. The dude's dead. All right. That's as much as we know. Here's the problem. I went to the AG's page this yep. morning and granted it was a very cursory review just literally going through their press releases but a fast way if you're curious like what's the ag up to you can go to the D department of justice new hampshire department of justice and look through their news section they will tell you when they're doing autopsies homicide reports whatever as far as i could glean again based on my cursory viewing in the past six months Every homicide that has been committed yep. in the state of New Hampshire was a cop shooting a citizen. Now, I tweeted that at uh, John Formella asking, this is my reading of what I'm seeing on the right. website. Am I correct? I am cautiously optimistic that Carla had it totally wrong and I can come back next week and report, oh, no, that's not true. A hundred percent of murders are not committed by police officers. But I will remind you that in 2017, the last time I went on this kind of rampage and clearly it's time for a new one, 25% uh, of homicides were being committed by police officers on uh, citizens. The other thing, and we've talked about this before on this show, is whatever def uh, definitionally they say is a justified homicide is then the rule for self-defense in New Hampshire. And, you know, I, maybe I'll teach a class at Porkfest or something that is, according to the Attorney General's justified homicide list, these are all justified self-defense actions. I think that's a fair fair way to approach it, right? It's like if you're going to say that's justified, and for the most part, honestly, when I look at the conclusions, yep. I'm like, okay, actually, I do want you to take it at face value if that person said, oh, I shot him in self-defense, I feared for my life. Now, I will also say that person better be facing you. Right. Because if someone's running away and you shoot him in the back, you're the bad guy. Period. True. True. Um. I'm like circling back. <laughs> All um, right, back into holiday mode. <laughs> I would also, this uh, it ties into what we started with, parking. So um, here in Manchester, which is strange to me, it's just the way they, it's government. Um, so they're discussing whether or not to allow restaurants downtown to do the street sections 
absorb parking in front of their restaurants with those awful cement jersey barriers to allow more outdoor dining. I, and I literally read the article and I'm like, you know what, I am completely torn because I don't know, because probably because Manchester never thinks ahead of time. We never come up with a, like, <laughs> hey, what are we gonna do next year when these people wanna do it? So first of all, I thought generally Jersey barriers are ugly as sin, right? And then we let them, we let the different restaurants paint them. So then they look doubly ugly as sin because it was a haphazard. There were a few that did really nice job. And I was like, oh, that's clever. Now we tape upstairs from Margarita's. Margarita's has the sidewalk space available. If baked was available, they'd have it. You know, there's different restaurants that you facilitate on the sidewalk. Uh, Murphy's used to use their sidewalk before they built their patio. Um, I love to eat outdoors. We eat outdoors at the Thirsty Moose on the sidewalk. And I don't I don't begrudge any restaurant wanting to use the sidewalk in front of their restaurant. I would like to see all those restaurants and establishments clean up the sidewalk in front of their restaurant if they're going to use it for dining because also downstairs on the corner of Lowell, it's usually pretty gross. Yeah. And if you're going to use it as part, then that should be part of the requirement. Now what they're trying what the little I read was um, so if you want to use the parking spots, it's like a thousand dollars because the city wants to not lose revenue. Well, it's a, it's like this double whammy. Like if you want people to come downtown, you have to make it attractive for them to come downtown. So maybe the city has to suck it up a little and give up some of their revenue so that we can make it more attractive for people to spend their money downtown. Because guess what ha happens then? There's more meals and rooms tax that comes back to the city. So. It just seems like we can never think outside the box and say, you know, maybe we'll try it for a summer and let's see what happens and let's see if it generates more more people coming downtown. Instead, the cities right away like wants to take their, their ounce of flesh They're out cut. of the businesses. And I, I don't understand why it's always the businesses and always the people who have to step up and pay more. Why why can't this the, the government just suck up a little? Maybe, maybe get rid of one employee. Just one instead of charging all of us to do everything. Or Just maybe saying. figure out how to live within your means or, and maybe or, those means could or, be like 19. Or maybe stop with the pensions and switch to a 401k plan. Yeah. Crazy. So cop. many good solutions that we have if only someone would listen. So now we're getting the one minute warning. So that went like that. Um, it's great to be back as much as the weather sucks here in New Hampshire. But April showers bring May flowers. That's right. I say I've that to growth. myself every morning. And everything's starting to turn green. And as soon as we have a sunny day, I bet everything pops. Um, if you have any questions, or anything, email us at manchtalk at gmail.com and we'll do our best to get back to you as quickly as possible. Otherwise, enjoy the spring and we will see you next week. Bye. Bye, guys.